everyone needs a fresh start. Let go of the past and embrace the new. I'm Courtney Wilson, and I've flipped so many houses. I know what works and what adds value. So homeowners trust me to transform their dated dysfunctional spaces. I want everything gone. But I'm not doing it alone. With my amazing contractor, Kenny. I want to go through that wall. We're making the right choices. Wow! Gosh. Making it beautiful. I can't believe we get to live here. All right, Courtney, I, um, I love the new show. I really, really do. Its energy is completely different from your other series. And I want to know from you how you how it feels different and how it how it looks different to an audience. Well, you know, I think it's going to feel different because it's a new, you know, I have a new co-host for one. Um, and Kenny is absolutely amazing. And we have a different kind of chemistry than Dave and I did for obvious reasons. Um, well, Kenny and I are not a couple. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we have we're a little bit teasy with him, I must say. <laughs> we are, yes, we are, but we're definitely not a couple. And no. we um, just kind of have more of like a brother sister relationship, which has really been fun. And that's on and off camera. Um, yeah. and, and which is interesting because we didn't know each other really until we, we started filming because of COVID, we couldn't meet in advance. Wow. And so that was kind of interesting, but you know, I, I love having somebody um, that I'm working with that really has a lot of design. Um, well, I, you know, he has a design aesthetic himself and he really yeah. kind of knows what he likes and dislikes and he's not afraid to tell me. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's part of the brother sister thing. It's really warm, but you're free to speak your mind. I mean, that's that's the key of the relationship. Exactly. But I do love your little bit of uh, back and forth. Yeah, we, well, you know, it's not a TV show unless you have a little bit of that, right? <laughs> well, this is cute. I want to know, so many people are renovating and restoring homes. And you with your experience and, um, you know, tools of the trade. Yeah. Just please give me a key piece of advice that you would tell anyone who's going to be starting a renovation. Oh, goodness gracious. Um, you know, when I say this, people think that I'm, I'm negative. I'm, I'm just a realist. Um, and having done so many houses, there's always something that is unexpected that happens, even for me. Yeah. So I think expecting the worst, planning for the worst even though it sounds like an, a glass, glass half empty approach, you will then enjoy the process, right? Because yeah. you're, you're going to get hit with things and be like, oh, right. this isn't so bad. But in renovation, there's always something that comes up. And so if you think everything's going to go perfectly, you're going to be very disappointed because behind the walls tell a story, a different story than you ever could have imagined. And um, so, you know, I, I think that's, that, that's the biggest thing. And then, and then also know your strength and weakness. So if you have a partner and one person loves design, let them take the lead on that. And if you love finance or are better at finance, let them take the lead on that. But don't try to do everything together. I don't think that works. <laughs> yeah, that's a great idea. But you know, there's so much truth to what you say about planning for the worst, because as you say, you can then relax. Because I, I, my nephew's doing his house and I know that it's very stressful for him and it's yeah. been two years now. And oh, with the yeah. lack of materials and labor during COVID, you know? So it's hard, it's hard, but you're right to make every kind of plan for what may go wrong. I think that's brilliant, just, just brilliant. Look at this place. Oh yeah. I mean, huge space. Pocket doors, like pocket doors when this was built. This Hello. Was like a Oh, hello. I am so sorry. The note that I got was that you weren't going to be here yeah. for an hour. So now yeah. I feel like we broke into your house. It's not like I would have done this had I known they were home. I would have knocked on the door like yes. a normal person. Yeah, I thought we kind of broke into some random person's home. We did break into well, some random person's home. Yeah, kind of. we kind of did, yeah. And in terms of design and decor, how wild do you think people can go to express who they are and still kind of um, maintain a a homely vibe. Well, I actually think, I mean, I mean, there are lots of examples of being able to go super wild with color and texture and patterns. The trick is doing it right. You know, just throwing a bunch of color on the walls, you know, and, and doing primary colors from room to room isn't gonna cut it. You have to be able to tie everything in together and that's the art. And I'm not even sure that I can always do that really, really well. I think it's, it's, a, it's a game, uh, trial and error for sure. 
Um, and, and remembering that it's just as it's, it's not rocket science. It's just paint at the end of the day. It's just furniture. <laughs> things can be returned things, but it's also money. So, you know, I think uh, hi hiring a designer up front to help with those things, mm -hmm. why not do that if you really want to go for it on your design? You know, or if, if you want to paint the house completely white and get sort of a farmhouse vibe, not as hard. Not as hard. That's right. Now, when people buy magazines, I've got a couple out here, um, and everything seems so unrealistic and, and, and expensive and, and kind of cray-cray. Um, yeah. How do you keep it uh, reined in and yet still use your imagination and not, um, not spend a fortune? Oh, I, 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 that's always kind of been my personal expertise. I'm, I'm actually a minimalist at heart and my, it, would, it would, would surprise people in my <laughs> house. So when a piece of art comes in, another piece goes out. I'm, I'm not always been that way. I definitely went through the shabby chic stuff and I went through the like tons of gallery walls and lots of stuff, but I really am what much more intentional um, now. And I think that you can get a big bang for a little buck by like, for example, if you have a beautiful entrance way and you're not really sure what to do with it, don't buy a bunch of pieces, buy one amazing, massive overscaled piece and then triple the frame size, you know, and you don't have to have a custom frame. You can have your, you know, a contractor or a handyman, just build it out of, out of MDF or, you know, plywood and then paint it. Um, so that's a great example of maybe instead of spending a thousand dollars in a really big custom frame for a massive piece of art, you can spend a hundred dollars and, yes. and make it look grand. I actually have a couple of pieces in here where I did that in my kid's playroom. And so, yeah, I think, I think, you know, you just got to get a little creative. Oh, my word. I would trust you with all my money to do a decor for me. <laughs> totally. You know what you're talking about. And I mean, it's obvious on the show, but it's so cool to see you come, you know, putting it in words for me. Look at this staircase. I mean, that's original. That's craftsmanship yeah. there. There obviously needs a little TLC, but yes, exactly. I mean, is the character of this house part of the reason you bought it as well? Absolutely. We love the windows and the rads, but the reality is that this house is very old very and likely old. needs m more than a few things, including stuff behind the walls to bring it all up to speed. Here's the thing about old homes like this. The character that you find in the small details is amazing. And I really like to work to keep that character alive in the design. But here's the other thing about old homes like this, is that you never know what kind of surprises you find once you start renovating them. Cheryl, you've got everything figured out. I admire the heck out of you. I really do. Well, thank you so much, Jan. <laughs> truly, truly. Thank you. So lovely to see you, Courtney. And I look forward to seeing so many more episodes of the show. And best of luck. I appreciate you. I was just going to say, is, door is, number this, one over is there? this your pantry? Because I don't see it anywhere else. Close. Oh, <laughs> no way. So that's interesting, to say the least. That's one thing we'd love to address, is figuring out a way to get back some of this space in the kitchen. I mean, the good thing is, is that you do have plumbing. That's yes. so, like, that's a good thing. We would love to keep a powder room on this floor, especially with small kids. It's nice to have access that they don't have to climb all the stairs to get to it. Oh, absolutely, yeah. no, that's, you have to have that. Beyond these two doors, these glass doors, is this like a mudroom situation? Mudroom and it leads out to the backyard. We'd love to see somewhere that we can kind of tuck our kids stuff away. They can drop their stuff okay. and kind of go about their day. We're talking like shoes and book bags. And exactly, and, yes. yeah. Okay, got it. Just because I love old houses, he does too. Do you mind if we just take a, Peek Please. upstairs? Yeah, yeah. Go, yeah. Ahead. go ahead. Okay, Let's go. thanks.